Okay, all the molds are filled. You can see them down here. And also these ones. Um, this and this mold is one of my prism die. This is so big, I might need to refill these. On all the other molds, I got a little um, marking on the inside of the filling funnel part, so I see how much I need to put into the mold, so I don't have a lot of waste material, but I have enough to fully fill the mold and have a little bit of extra on top. So, now we need to fill our mold, so we use the vacuum chamber, put on the lid, uh, yeah, I think you can see that. And we start sucking out the air. You can now see how the bubbles start to rise. This is the air that is trapped inside our mold. And after a moment, I release pressure. And as you can see, here and all the other molds, the level is now much lower, so I pushed in a lot of material and I repeat this a few times to make sure all the molds are fully filled. If you pull too much vacuum, you start to degas the material, so all the tiny bubbles in the material start to pop up, so it starts to foam a little bit on the surface and bubble all around. We don't want that, we just want to remove the air inside the mold. Okay, I let this sit for about five minutes. We have 40 minutes of working time. A few minutes are already passed. I will let it sit for about five minutes. So if there are any bubbles stuck inside, they have a little bit of time to come close to the filling spot. And then I draw a last time vacuum to make sure I catch these bubbles as well. And then we go into the pressure pot. Okay, five minutes are over. I use the time in between to clean up a little bit of my workspace. Okay, there are no bubbles coming from the mold itself. It's just a little bit of bubbling at the surface here. So, we still have bubbles in our material, but the molds are nearly fully filled and the funnel makes sure that when we use the pressure pot and we uh, eliminate uh, the bubbles inside the mold, uh, that there's enough material that can flow back in and we make sure the mold is fully filled. So, now we put on the lid. Put you a little bit back. Okay, light is not the best here to do this. Let me see. There you can see a little bit of a pressure gauge. When you close it, make sure that uh, you screw crosswise so always the opposite side and then evenly step by step go from side to side to make sure you don't bend your lid even if it's that thick you want to make sure not to bend it or have a lower spot in here and then we just need some pressure Connected to the pressure pot and in my case I got the little compressor over there. It's an airbrush compressor. Um, it's regulated so it will automatically stop at around 60 psi. So I don't need to take too much attention to this so I can't do anything wrong. This will shut off automatically when I reach the right uh, pressure. But you want to make sure uh, when you open your valve Take it slowly, when you uh, push it open right away, you will force a lot of air to go in this and thereby you can push the air directly onto your molds and then splatter around your material 
and you don't want to splash it all on the inside of your pressure pot so make sure you slowly raise this and now we just need to wait for this to raise And we are done. Then I close the lid, pull off the connector, and then I like to put my pressure pot on a warm place so I will take it near the radiator and we are good to go. So the 24 hours are over, and now I will give you a close up look at this. And this is just the leftover material in the filling funnel. You can see all these little sparkly dots. And now it's time to put them out of the molds. So I like to use a little basket some clippers. I always uh, like to wear some gloves in the worst case that something is not uh, carefully cured and um, some of the stuff is sticky or so I don't want to touch that so I like to wear my gloves just to be safe. And here we have our first one. Okay, I see my light setup is not the best to show you. Uh, there you can see a little bit of a glitter. I will do some close up shots later. But I think in general, there you can see a little bit, it's translucent enough. So that's the kind of smoke that I like. And. And a clip of these. You can see here I like to leave a little bit of material left so that's something I can trim off later and don't have any issues to lose something from the die so I can carefully get to my dimensions. So these will go just loosely together uh, for the next cast I need to um, prep them again so I just uh, let them loosely yeah that's a really nice cast And I will go a little bit quicker now and run you through the complete demolding. And here we are, all the dies are cut free, let's see if I can get you a better idea, you see here on this guy, the nice greenish glitter, very happy with the result. That's pretty nice. Yeah, so next step is removing all the leftover spruce, clean up, 
and some paint. So our dies are finished now. This is the result. Let's take a look at some of those bigger edges here. And we can see all the greenish glitter and all smoke. I know my design is not the best to show these sparkly glittery stuff. So that's also a reason I didn't do that earlier. Um, the pigment is a little bit of a surprise. Um, it's a metallic shock, whatever called nail powder stuff. And I hoped for a cool metallic greenish look and didn't expect it to work like that. So maybe if I do more of that in there, um, I could get another uh, result. But so far, uh, I think that's a nice accident, so I can keep with it. Already a lot of people uh, who saw some of the pictures that I posted on Instagram are behind these. So uh, I have to look if I can get more. Um, I really like the result. It's a little bit hidden, so at the first sight you won't notice it. Uh, that's a cool feature of these dyes that I personally really like. I got some pearls and stuff and from the far they look pretty simple and straight and if you take a closer look you can see the depth of the material when you take a look at all the edges and the numbers. So I really like that. Um, this is a little bit better. I think I caught a flake here so maybe I didn't clean up the mold from the last cast so sometimes this happens but for prototype, I think that's good enough. And these are some. This is uh, this is the prism die. He got a lot of surface area, so that's a good one to uh, show this effect. But I also have these. I will take some shots when the sun is out, so uh, I put them right behind this part here. But I think you can see the effect right now. Yeah, so that's so far how I cast all my dice. Um, it's not the one way to do this so there are definitely other ways to make it but I feel comfortable with uh, this method um, some other people use syringes to fill the molds or um, they just have uh, bigger filling spots that's all good to go so at the point you think of getting some better equipment and you um, take in mind of getting a vacuum chamber or pressure pot I would definitely recommend going first with the pressure pot because you can use the pressure pot for casting your dice as well as your molds um, it's also necessary to pressure cast your uh, silicon molds when you want to pressure cast your dice just in case you have uh, any bubbles in your um, mold it will get squished from the pressure of the pressure pot and thereby you will have a bumpy die. So maybe if you have a bubble right next to one of these edges here, uh, if it gets squished together, uh, it will deform the mold. So you will have a little bump on the outside of your die. Nothing too bad. You can sand it away or so, but it's it's not ideal. So um, that's, that's something you should keep in mind. Also... Um, the vacuum chamber is nice if you have a longer working time, a longer pot life, so you have time to degas your material. Maybe if you have the materials needed on hand, it's an easy way to start with the vacuum chamber. So you can use the vacuum chamber also to uh, cast nice and bubble-free dice. That's where I started. I started with a vacuum pump because I uh, had one laying around at home and to build up the chamber was very easy. Uh, it's also a little bit cheaper, I think. Um, 
regarding what kind of stuff you have on hands or where you can get a cheap version so maybe you can find some stuff on ebay or so that you get cheap um yeah that's so far from my dice casting um if you have any questions feel free to use the comment section below and yeah i hope to see you in the next video then i really want to go for the dice towers uh, i'm just mid producing the video so it will take a while for this to come up and uh, until that uh, happy dice making and thanks for watching